This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. I'm doing an installation of a new refrigerator today, so you can see it's still on the pallet. I'm just slowly uncrating it. But something that I like to do when I do new installs is I like to plug them in. Okay, there's nothing blocking the condenser. Plug the unit in so that way I can see it come down to temperature before I remove their old reach in. So I'm gonna continue to undo this pallet and uh, luckily I have a trash can here, so I'm breaking it up into tiny pieces. Always, again, concerned about the customer. I'm not gonna throw a giant pallet in there. I'm gonna throw it in in pieces so that way they can still stack on top of their trash can and not overfill it. But yeah, just plug them in, saves you a bunch of time. Another thing too, on these new Dell fields, they start in a defrost, if you don't know that. So you hold the defrost button down. It's flickering because of my shutter speed or whatever on my camera hold down the defrost button and it'll come out of defrost. So now I can see the bottom come down to temp and the top come down to temp before I get it completely uncrated and I know that everything's working properly on the region. So I'm currently pulling the laser paper off <coughs> that they use to <coughs> do all the, <coughs> they basically use it to protect the stainless and to help them guide when they're doing their cuts at the factory. Um, so I'm pulling all the laser paper off. You can see the box is almost, well, if this thing would stop jumping around, but um, yeah, it's almost down to temp, so I'm just gonna keep pulling the laser paper off and then, you know, it'll make everything go that much faster by doing it this way, so. So here's the finishing package, okay? You've got a reach-in cooler. It's got a cold rail on the top. This is an R290 system. Note the red tape on the process stubs and the caution flammable stuff. Um, looks like they changed their uh, access door. So that's your condenser right there. We made them like little quick removable doors. And this is your compressor section right here. Nothing special. Uh, we do need to visually inspect in here. Now this is a Delfield unit. Um, they, uh, they have this microprocessor temperature controller and it does cycle the fans. So there's a little fan switch on here and the fan is only running when the fan switch is on. So the unit is satisfied right now so the evaporator fan motor is off. So don't be afraid if you come in here and the fan isn't running. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. But the box is down to temp. Now we're gonna set the defrost timer on the back of the unit. On this particular model, you need to consult your user manual to know how yours works. But on this particular model, this defrost timer only controls the cold rail. And they have it set up to shut off from midnight till 8 a.m. So we're gonna go ahead and set the time. It's 2.15 p.m. right now. So we'll set that, we'll put all the covers back on. And other than that, there's not really much more to check on these things. Obviously, it needs to come down to temperature in a reasonable amount of time. For this particular unit, uh, I'd expect it to take about 15 to 20 minutes. Anything longer than that, and you have a problem, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, this one came down to temp in about 10 minutes. I don't see any visible shipping damage or anything. Everything looks good. Um, I'm going to put the covers back on, and then go ahead and remove their old reach-in, recover the charge, and dispose of it for them. But yeah, that's it. Delfield prep table installation. Nothing crazy about them. All right, this was a quick one. Uh, just showing you guys the steps that I go through on a reach and installation, okay? You notice that I am, again, as I always am, am concerned about the customer um, filling up their trash can. There's nothing worse than having someone go and just throw an entire pallet in there to where it's sticking up and blocking off to where they can't, you know, fill their trash can appropriately. You got to understand that they only get their trash dumped so often and they don't account for things like pallets and, you know, large bulky items. Most of the time they want us to take that stuff with us. But if you can do it discreetly and making sure that you're not taking up their trash space, then it's no big deal. So you just kind of throw the wood in there and you're good to go. Okay. So it's little things like that that really make you go a long way with the customer and help to build that relationship and that trust that they have with you okay then you know just looking at the big picture when you're doing the installation it doesn't matter what manufacturer it is every manufacturer has different methods at which their units operate so this particular unit is a Delfield and I just happen to know that this particular customer has them custom built to where it has a, a Graslin defrost module on the back and that Graslin defrost module only affects the top section okay it's also very important to understand that that Graslin defrost module that Delfield puts inside that particular unit has essentially what we would call a battery backup. So you can unplug that unit and it won't lose time. Uh, I think it holds it for 150 hours, I think is what it is. So, you know, that's one of the things too that really, um, 
makes it so important to order the OEM parts because you can go buy a Graslin module from your normal supply house. And if you don't pay attention, most of the time the supply houses don't stock the one with the battery backup. Okay. And uh, you can put in the wrong one and you know, it just causes problems. You know, restaurants, they unplug their boxes, especially little regions like that all the time uh, when they're cleaning underneath them, if they're cleaning, some restaurants don't clean, but you get where I'm going at. Okay. So, you know, that's why I like to go with OEM parts, um, and understanding the sequence of operation on the units. Okay. Also that little Dan Foss, uh, temperature controller, the digital temperature controller that they have on there. Um, it's got some programming to it and the programming cycles, the evaporator fan motor. So there's actually some logic to it. You can call and talk to the factory and they'll let you know, but basically when the unit satisfies, if it satisfies for so much time, the evaporator fan motor turns off for so much time. If it stays satisfied, past a certain time period, then the evaporator fan motor will turn back on, you know, just to kind of move airflow. But it's a whole like energy efficiency thing that um, the federal government basically made them do to meet energy standards. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Just, you know, I can't stress enough just taking your time and doing things right. Now, granted, you know, when, when I say taking your time, I get a lot of comments and questions like, well, how does your company let you do that? Or how does the customer not get angry? When I say taking my time, I'm being smart about my time. I'm not taking five hours to do a reach and install. I'll bet you anything that reach and install probably took me all but 45 minutes. Okay. And that includes the recovery of the old refrigerant and moving the old box out. So, I mean, I'm in and out. I'm just very efficient with my time. Okay. So it's that kind of stuff, you know, thinking about the job and what I suggest, you know, you do too, is every time you do a job, no matter how mundane or how difficult it is, you always, I would suggest you to reflect after you're done and think, what could I have done better? How could I have done that faster? Okay. Little things like plugging in the box before you completely uncrate it. So that way you don't have to wait for 15 minutes for it to come down to temp, right? That little bit saves you all that time and makes you look better to the customer, to your company, and makes you just more efficient in general. You know, people ask me, how come you take so long to clean an ice machine? My service company doesn't let me take that much time. It's because I'm efficient with my time. I'm probably, I mean, to an extent, I'm probably not taking too much longer than most other people. Okay. Now, granted, if you're cutting corners and not cleaning an ice machine thoroughly, then yes, I take a lot more time than you, but you get what I'm saying. You know, I think about the customer and I think about the most efficient way to do the job properly, a hundred percent to make sure it's done right. But as quick as possible without cutting corners, right? All right, so I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Check out some of the other videos that I have popping up right now. There's lots of other great channels besides mine, okay? Um, there's a lot more technicians that are better than I too. Some of them just haven't picked up a camera to start making videos yet, and some of them have, okay? So give some of these other guys a shot. Even if I don't recommend them, look at some of the other channels. You guys can tell when someone's doing a good job or not, okay? Other than that, we will see you guys on the next one, okay?